Hi, it's Katrina. From statues left behind by a lost people to the legendary city visited by Marco Polo, here are nine incredible archaeological sites. Number 9. Ancient Statues of San Agustin Thousands of years ago, the southern part of Colombia was home to a mysterious civilization. Covering 250 square miles, the area is full of stone statues guarding burial sites that date back to over 2,000 years ago. But who built this place? Very little is known about the Andean culture that once lived here, but they left behind some of the most important and mysterious sculptures in South America. There are around 600 statues and at least 40 large burial mounds spread throughout the area. Some of the statues range from 1.6 feet tall to as high as 23 feet tall, depicting all kinds of creatures and human figures, gods, and perhaps even monsters. There are many different styles of sculptures, with some very realistic and others more abstract. The scarier ones were probably placed there to protect the dead. The statues were first described by a Spanish monk in the 1700s, but the place was already abandoned. Since then, the site has been ransacked by looters, but amazingly, many statues still remain. In this case, there was very little gold to be found. It seems that the people here did not have as much as in other regions, and people lost interest. They are now part of San Agustin Archaeological Park, and you can go and visit yourself. The best way to visit is apparently on horseback, so you can cover as much of the park as possible. Number 8. King Herod's Tomb King Herod the Great ruled over Judea from 37 to 4 BC and is remembered mostly for his cruelty, having murdered all male infants in Bethlehem to prevent the fulfillment of a prophecy about the birth of the Messiah. Historians have been looking for years for evidence of whether or not this really happened. The only mention of this mass killing is in the book of Matthew. However, it does seem like something he would do since he did arrange the murder of three of his sons, his own wife, and other family members. The search for the tomb of the Judean tyrant was on. He died at his palace in Jericho in 4 BC from a strange, violent illness and was memorialized in an extravagant funeral at the edge of the Judean desert in Herodium, a complex built by the king on a cone-shaped hill outside Jerusalem. But even after Herodium was discovered in the 1830s, the exact location of Herod's tomb remains a mystery thousands of years in the making. Where is he? At the top of the mountain? Inside of it? Archaeologists from Hebrew University announced that they had found Herod's resting place. The London Daily Mail reported a new discovery may solve the mystery of the Bible's bloodiest tyrant. While they did find a tomb, there was a shattered sarcophagus inside that did not contain any inscriptions identifying its occupant, so it's hard to tell whose it was. Since everything was in such small pieces, it looks like it was deliberately smashed. While experts generally accept the discovery as valid, some doubt the findings based on the tomb's simplicity and small size, which stand in stark contrast to the man's reputation for grandiosity and master planning. Evidence suggests that if it is Herod's tomb, it was destroyed shortly after his death by residents of Judea, who did not miss the tyrannical ruler and finally got the chance to show him how they really felt without risking their lives. Number 7. Port Arthur Port Arthur was a 19th century penal colony on the Australian island of Tasmania that began as a small timber station in 1830. At first, the most hardened British criminals were sent there. Then other prisoners in Australia who rebelled or caused problems were also sent there. In theory, it was the worst of the worst, with increased security measures to control the prisoners that were too difficult to handle at more traditional convict stations. This included children as young as nine years old. The prison was deemed inescapable and it was expanded in 1855. Unlike other prison stations, which engaged in harsh corporal punishments like whippings, Port Arthur imposed psychological torture in the form of what's known as the separate prison system. Prisoners were forced to wear hoods and remain silent, effectively cut off from any meaningful human contact. This hardlined policy was allegedly designed to give inmates a chance to reflect on the behavior that got them there in the first place. Not surprisingly, the lack of sight, sound, and interaction had the opposite of a therapeutic effect, causing many prisoners to become seriously mentally ill. The experimental treatment of this separate prison system ultimately proved that cruel treatment was not only defined by slave labor or physical suffering, and what went on at Port Arthur played a role in the penal reform movement that followed. The prison was abandoned in 1877, and most of its buildings were subsequently auctioned off. People didn't seem to mind, as the site's decay meant the erasing of Port Arthur's dark past. Fires and earthquakes hastened the destruction of some of the buildings, and residents swiftly established a new town, seemingly eager to rebrand the area's reputation. 
But curious individuals continued to visit the remaining ruins, and what's left of Port Arthur fell under government management during the 1970s. In 2010, the property became a UNESCO World Heritage Site, ensuring the inhumane suffering that went on there will not be forgotten. And now for the real Greek Atlantis. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Crazy Bella Kim and Rayanne Kemp. Thanks so much for spending time with us in our little corner of the internet. We love you! If you are new here, welcome, and be sure to subscribe! Number 6. Helike Just like the legendary city of Atlantis, the city of Helike was destroyed by angry gods. But this city was well documented, with many written accounts that held clues of what really may have happened. Dubbed the real-life Atlantis of ancient Greece, Helike was an ancient Greek polis, or city-state, located on the northwestern part of the Peloponnesian Peninsula. It was once the leader of the Achaean League, a Hellenistic-era confederation of Greek city-states in the region. Founded during the Bronze Age, Helike was an important economic, cultural, and religious center. Its patron god was Poseidon, the god of the sea and earthquakes, which is unsurprising given the city-state's location in one of Europe's most active earthquake zones. One winter night in 373 BC, Helike suffered a catastrophe that caused all its residents to disappear. Days earlier, all the wild animals had vanished from the area. The city completely sank into the sea, and the only remaining visible remnants were the tops of some buildings sticking out of the water. Ancient people attributed the disaster to Poseidon seeking revenge or punishment. It was most likely an earthquake, followed by a massive tsunami that wiped Helike off the map. Ancient travelers and philosophers wrote that although the city was gone, its walls were still visible underwater and that a bronze statue of Poseidon was a hazard to fishermen's nets. Over time, people could no longer find it. Finally, in 2001, the city was found again. It was not confirmed to be Helike until 2012, when its destruction layer was uncovered. Excavations are ongoing and will hopefully show us what this ancient lost city once looked like. Number 5. Mayan Ceremonial Complex Last year, a groundbreaking study announced the discovery of the oldest and largest monumental structure ever found in the Maya region. It was a 3,000-year-old earthen platform containing a series of structures, including a 13-foot-tall pyramid. Archaeologists discovered the structure in 2017 in Mexico's Tabasco State, roughly 850 miles east of Mexico City. Thanks to LIDAR, a technology that detects structures underground, even through thick vegetation, researchers are able to see more than they have before, without having to go and explore sites in person. As it turns out, the complex sat undetected in plain sight in a semi-forested area for centuries or longer. People had been there in person, actually, but it was so covered and dense that nobody had a clue. Archaeologist and lead study author Takeshi Inomata told National Geographic, It's fairly hard to explain, but when you walk on the site, you don't quite realize the enormity of the structure. It was so big, they just thought it was a hill. It's over 30 feet high, but it's so wide that you don't even realize it. Radiocarbon dating analysis put the construction of the site at around 1000 BC, and no older buildings were found in the area, suggesting that the Maya lived in temporary structures before then, moving from one area to the next as hunter-gatherers. But something happened that made them build an enormous, permanent structure. Inomata estimates the total volume of the platform and buildings to be about 130 million cubic feet, making it larger than the biggest pyramid in Egypt. The place was somewhere for people to gather as a ceremonial center. It most likely involved processions and parades and rituals that we can only imagine. Number 4. Montgomery Mining Town Founded in 1861 at 10,873 feet above sea level, the former gold mining town of Montgomery, Colorado was once the place to be. Located 13 miles south of Breckenridge, it housed as many as 1,000 residents at its peak, boasting both a saloon and a hotel. But people go where the money goes, and once the gold dried up towards the end of the 1860s, residents began relocating to nearby mining camps and elsewhere in hopes of striking a fortune. The discovery of silver at Montgomery briefly revived its prosperity, but the silver crash of 1893 prompted people to set their sights on other dreams. By the end of the 19th century, Montgomery was completely abandoned. The city of Colorado Springs ultimately purchased the land that the town once sat on and intentionally flooded it in 1957, dubbing the newly created body of water the Montgomery Reservoir. To the naked eye, all that exists today is a lake and a handful of remaining buildings that surround it, including five of Montgomery's sawmills. 
but unless you're looking for these buildings, it would be easy to visit the site and not have any clue that an entire town used to be there. The bulk of Montgomery's remains and the untold stories they come with lie beneath the water's surface. The submerged ruins will eventually most likely be forgotten about. Number 3. Missing City Kalatka Darband is a lost city that has been missing for over 2,000 years. It was conquered by Alexander the Great himself on his way to battle Darius III, the last king of the Achaemenid Empire of Persia in 331 BC. Located in modern-day Iraqi Kurdistan, the site was a fortified settlement and a popular trade route. Surprisingly, over time, it was lost. In 2017, archaeologists from the British Museum announced the rediscovery of Kalatka Darband thanks to drone technology and declassified spy documents. Lead archaeologist John McGuinness told The Times that the team believes that the site was once a bustling city on a road from Iraq to Iran, adding you can imagine people supplying wine to soldiers passing through. McGuinness and his team analyzed declassified images taken as part of the Corona Spy satellite program. Operating from 1960 to 1972, it was the first U.S. photo reconnaissance satellite program. The images became publicly available in 1995. Excavating the site did not become safe until 2016, however, due to the effects of the Saddam Hussein regime and the 2003 U.S. invasion of Iraq. Based on imagery alone, featuring pottery fragments and buildings constructed in the Greco-Roman style, experts determined that the site was occupied during the Parthian period. Further investigations using drones revealed the presence of underground walls from a large fortified building beneath modern-day wheat and barley fields. Real-life excavations are ongoing as the world waits to hear the ancient city's untold stories. Number 2. Xanadu Located north of China's Great Wall and about 220 miles north of Beijing, the ancient Chinese site of Xanadu, also called Shengdu, contains the remains of Mongol ruler Kublai Khan's legendary capital city. Originally called Kaiping, it was designed with the goal of assimilating Northern Asia's nomadic Mongolian and Han cultures with agrarian civilizations, and it's where Kublai Khan established the Yuan Dynasty, which ruled China for over a century. The site played a major role in the spread of Tibetan Buddhism throughout Northeast Asia, which has persisted in some places into modern times. It was designed in traditional Chinese feng shui and includes temples, palaces, tombs, nomadic encampments, and various canals. Marco Polo visited Xanadu in 1275 while it was still inhabited and described the incredible site to Europeans. The city was conquered in 1369 under Zhu Yuanzheng, the founding emperor of the Ming Dynasty. All that's left of Xanadu are ruins surrounded by the former city walls, which remain visible only as a grass mound. Nevertheless, it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2012 for its visible history of the fusion between different cultures, as well as the society's ability to cohabitate peacefully. Restoration efforts have been underway since 2002 in hopes of reviving the ancient city's story. Number 1. Scara Bray Located on Scotland's west coast, Scara Bray is a stone-built Neolithic settlement consisting of 10 clustered flagstone houses situated within earthen dams. The settlement contains a primitive sewer system with basic toilets and drains inside each home, which carried human waste into the ocean. Occupied from 3180 BC to 2500 BC, Scara Bray is Europe's most complete Neolithic village. It's older than both Stonehenge and the Great Pyramids, offering an incredibly rare glimpse into the life of past civilizations. Scara Bray was discovered in the winter of 1850 after a severe storm, when residents spotted the outlines of the village and several small dwellings. Four houses were excavated before the site was abandoned in 1868. Then, in 1913, the site was looted, and the plunderers made off with numerous artifacts that never got their chance to enter the historical record. Later on, another storm exposed more of the site, finally prompting officials to take action to protect it from further damage. Subsequent excavations reveal that Scara Bray's inhabitants used a type of pottery called grooved ware, which is distinctive to northern Scotland. Their houses were sunken into earthen walls, which protected the structure from the elements and provided added stability. The homes are tiny by today's standards, measuring just 430 square feet on average. Besides being equipped with a basic toilet, each dwelling contains a hearth that was used for heating and cooking. 
Experts estimate that no more than 50 people lived in Scarabray at any given time, given its small size. It's believed that Scarabray may have been abandoned around 2500 BC amid a cooling climate, prompting its residents to seek shelter somewhere more hospitable. But it's unknown why the settlement was deserted, and theories abound, including the possibility that a major storm prompted the exodus. Thanks for watching! Which place would you like to visit in real life, or have you already? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!